So Oregon linebacker Bryce Betcher was taken in the 13th round of the Major League Baseball draft, which I think is fantastic. I thought he was deprived of the Defensive Player of the Year honors in the Pac-12 this past season, and he was drafted by an organization that is a Mariners fan. I I don't even know if I want to say the name. I'll just say I'm rooting for Bryce to succeed in whatever he does. Awesome guy, big-time competitor, just a really, really cool athlete for Oregon fans to follow. And I hope he succeeds with some other organization because I'd hate to have the Mariners hit the ball in the center field and Bryce Betcher be out there roaming around to make a bunch of catches and deprive them of the two hits they usually get per game. So I'm not sure what this means for his football career. I asked Jared Mack of the Austin Audibles whether you know, he thinks he's done. That's going to be a discussion. A, I don't know if debate is the right word, but... It depends on when the Astros need him to report, when they want him to get into the minor league system. And if they're able to work it out, Bryce Betcher seems to me, and Jared agreed, as the sort of guy who would want to play football for one last season before he goes on to play Major League Baseball. I also totally understand if the Astros come back to him and say, no, you need to either start your baseball career now or you need to go play football for another year and put your baseball career on hold. Or, you know, guys get drafted and then they don't end up signing and whatnot. Like, that that happens regularly. And if it's in his best interests for his baseball career to start sooner rather than later and not play this upcoming football season where he's got one year of eligibility left, I think he should do that. Because his professional prospects, he's not going to be an NFL player, but he can be a Major League Baseball player. He, he is a guy... You know, certainly he'd have to work on uh, his bat and develop that a little bit. Like, he was a good hitter for Oregon this year. Was he, you know, tearing it up? No. But if he gets to the majors, is he someone who, you know, I could see being a platoon outfielder or a a consistent defensive replacement for a guy who's maybe not as fleet of foot? Yeah, yeah, he can can do all of that. I mean, he's got the range. He's got the glove. He's got the instincts. He's got the arm. That dude can be a big league outfielder. If, If he's just able to hit, you know, above well above the Mendoza line, which is 200, I think that he can be uh, have, have a good career in Major League Baseball, which is why if it comes to that, I see why he would choose to begin that path and not play football this season. But this will have an impact. There has not been a decision made, as far as I am aware, uh, by the time you're listening to or watching this show. There has not been a decision made as to what he's going to be able to do. But this will make an impact on Oregon's defense because the linebacker room, if I put together a two-deep, he'd be on it. My my two-deep for Oregon linebackers right now goes something like this. Unit number one, Jeffrey Bossa, Justin Jacobs. Don't think anybody's going to argue there. Unit number two, Devin Jackson and Bryce Betcher. He'd be the number four linebacker. And last year, Oregon had five linebackers that played meaningful snaps throughout the course of the year. Jeff Bossa, Justin Jacobs, Bryce Betcher, Jamal Hill, and Devin Jackson. So Jamal Hill was uh, taken in this year's NFL draft. And Bryce Betcher, we don't know. The other three, of course, are back. But if you take Betcher out of the mix you suddenly need two linebackers to step up and play a role that they did not play a season ago or even anything close to it, which is why, as I said, this is going to to be an impact move on Oregon's defense. Now, is it going to make or break Oregon's defense? No. Until you start to have injuries flare up at a given position. I mean, Justin Jacobs only played half the games last year because he was coming off an injury, and he's unfortunately battled them throughout his career. Now, Devin Jackson would be the guy to step up, but you see how easily somebody who you look at and say, oh, that's the number four or number five linebacker, it's just not that far from being someone who is called upon in big moments and has to play meaningful snaps in games that Oregon has to win to make the college football playoff in 2024. So... I'm curious to see how this works out. The guys that you know are, are kind of in that next batch of linebackers, uh, we saw a little bit of Jerry Mixon, who, who was a three-star recruit, played a little bit as a true freshman, but redshirted, I believe, in uh, the 2023 season. Uh, that's a guy 
who could be on the depth chart more than he was a year ago. Connor Soley was primarily a special teamser a season ago. He's been one of those safety linebacker hybrids, and so too was Bryce Betcher. He was you know, playing safety in the spring game in 2023 when he made all these impact plays, and I watched and wondered, like, man, is that guy not going to see the field? Because, man, he looks really good. And, and then what do you know? He's one of Oregon's uh, most important defensive players because of uh, the injury to Justin Jacobs, and he filled a lot of that role. Now, Jamal Hill did a good job as well, but those four guys were all key parts uh, of Oregon's defense, uh, That those four guys being Jeff Bossa, Devin Jackson, Jamal Hill, and, and Bryce Betcher in the mix. And you definitely saw less of Betcher once Jacobs got himself back into the rotation and was healthy. Like, I don't think Betcher is someone that can be an all-conference caliber player, but can he produce? Can he be solid? Yeah. Yeah, he, he can. He, he's a guy who you don't feel like is a weakness out there. You don't feel like he's, you know, a, a game changer or a disruptor. But, you know, you look at Jerry Mixon, that'd be a name. Connor Soley could be a name as well. And then you're turning to true freshmen. If if neither one of those guys are able to put the clamps down on, on the void that Betcher would hypothetically leave here. And you're looking at Kamar Mathudi or Braden Platt, who we saw in the spring game and to me, didn't quite look ready to be contributors at, at, at the Power Four level. And Dylan Williams is someone who's going to enroll in the fall, and that's asking a lot for somebody to come in and play linebacker right away. I, I mean, you think of you know, the number of Oregon linebackers that have played as true freshmen. I mean, Noah Sewell did, because he was a big, big-time recruit, and he was a really, really good player right away. Justin Flo in that camp as well and though these are a th- though this is a talented group of, of four-star linebacker recruits I don't think they're as college ready as Justin Flo and Noah Sewell were physically to to step on the field and make an impact so uh, definitely stoked for Bryce Besser like I mean the the legend seemed to just kind of grow every week as he was out there balling in center field for Mark Wasikowski's team and he was a big part I think from an impact and leadership standpoint, helping Oregon get to its second straight Super Regional. And it seemed like every week he was making a top 10 play. He was making a web gem and just continuing to build that case. I, I still, I, I don't know what he had to do. Admittedly, did I watch the guy in Washington that, that ended up winning the award? No, I'm, I'm sure he was phenomenal. I, I just was watching a lot of Oregon baseball and Bryce Petter was making a highlight play basically every single week, every series, and not just in games where Oregon's up 12-3, to three, but, I mean, he, he's saving runs. I, I don't know if college baseball's got the metrics like they do in Major League Baseball. If you did an analysis of, of how many runs he saved over the course of the year, gosh, I bet you it would be a big number. I, I bet you it would be a big, big number. So, stoked for Bryce Betcher. Not surprised that he got drafted. Definitely monitoring, though, where he is going to where, where he's going to be this fall, whether he's able to come back and play for Oregon football. And if he if he does, great. I'm, I'm here for it. I just understand the reality that he might have to get a jump start on his baseball career because that's where his best long-term prospects lie as a professional athlete. But gosh, I am excited to watch him play Major League Baseball one day. I just hope it's not against my Mariners. Uh, you guys sent in some more mailbag questions, and I love them. Absolutely love them. Oregon's taken a lot of shots recently for their NIL collective, and I think I know why. That's coming up next.